This is Deborah Atkinson, and you're listening to the Voice for Fitness Professionals podcast, where I share programming, marketing, and promotion strategies that are easy, enjoyable, even fun, so you can create a business and a life you love. And we're doing something really special today. From time to time, we do a live coaching, and you hit it. That's what we're doing today. My guest is Carla from Arizona, and a shout out to Fitness Fest events, which is where we run into each other. Carla asked a couple great questions after the event that I have a hunch maybe of interest to you listening to. Whether you've got a business and you want to grow it, or you're itching to leave working for a boss and do something in health and fitness on your own, or you're somewhere in between, I think this will appeal to you. So first of all, Carla, thanks for being here. Absolutely. Thank you. So what we're going to do, our agenda today for listeners is I'm going to read the questions Carla asked me and then kind of elaborate a little bit. So this is so good. It's so much better than responding kind of cold to an email because there's a two-way street going on. I can ask questions and ask for clarification. She can add something she may not have thought about as I read it. So here we go with the first one. A little background. I teach yoga for community and employees in the school district where I work. I use a school within the district to teach my classes. I run the classes via the academic support systems department. So it's kind of my own thing, but yeah, it runs through the school district. I don't have much support getting the school district to advertise for me, with social media as I don't think they like the word yoga and its connotations. All I get is a paper flyer that's sent out via email to the school secretaries to post and display by the teacher mailboxes. So the questions first that come is, number one, is there a way to use social media on my own to promote my classes? And can I uh, set up my own web page or Facebook page for this. What other types of social media can I use? I'm not very techy and I have very little experience with social media. I'm 58 years old and just getting started understanding how it all works. So I'm going to toss it back to you, Carla, as I read all that. Any, anything you want to add or clarify? Um, I think it's really more about just really that advertising out to people and starting to use social media to promote, you know, what I do because I really am passionate and believe in it. And I I really think it would benefit um, the employees and also community members, you know, around the area as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just really looking for kind of maybe what are the most important things to do first, things that could help me out the most. And mm-hmm. um, go from there. I, you know, I do have support. They allow me to use these great facilities, and um, they're all for it. And um, but it's kind of like, how do I get going with it? Gotcha. Okay. Let me ask a couple questions about your your end game. So, first of all, are you getting paid for this? Is this a volunteer thing for you? Yes, I get paid, but it's a very minimal amount because I work it through um, a district. They take mm-hmm. a certain proportion or uh, okay. portion of what I charge, so okay. I don't get the full amount. Okay, great. So the most of what you want is really to help others have a higher quality of life. Yes, that's the end goal, yes. Okay, so is there any hope in the future of monetizing that so that it does make money, it's actually a revenue generator for you, or is it more a movement in helping the community? I think right now, first of all, I think it's more of a movement to get as many people open to the possibility of what I'm doing. Um, I think that's the first thing. And then second after that, I think, would then – maybe be building the revenue. Fantastic. Okay. So a couple of things, because it is a school system, potentially a government-run type of program, unless it's a privately owned school. Right. It's public, yeah. Okay. 
So you probably have to jump through a few hoops to get them to do anything or they do. And that may be why you're sensing you don't have a lot of support. Whatever they post on social media probably has to go through three or four X's and O's and make sure everything is okay and kosher. And that may be part of the problem. They may sense that this isn't great um, because everybody might come out of the woodwork who had a fitness facility that was for profit and say, wait a minute, (laughs) Um, you know, parents who are involved, for instance. So it can get really messy really fast. But I would think you need to go to someone who's in charge of their the school's public relations or whatever they do post on social media and see if, you know, if I promote this, may I tag you? So you want to know if you can tag their page. Yeah. That would be helpful. And the school should love that you're doing it. And it sounds like you've got that. It's just promotion. Yeah, Yeah, So if they've got a page and or multiple pages, maybe they have one that's dedicated to students and one to parents or PTO or or whatever, find out about that because you're really wanting to get to the students, or I'm sorry, the parents, and maybe the faculty and staff as well. So is it open to everybody? Are you just targeting teachers? Yes, it's open to employees first, and then it's open to community as well. Okay, good. I didn't thought maybe I was overstepping my boundary. So that's yep. great. Yeah. And you know, what I would suggest is, you know, on your own Facebook page, first of all, make sure that right now if you only have a personal page, you're okay with that. What's happening right now on social media is personal pages t- are tending to do better. So, oh, okay. you know, eventually if you thought, you know, I actually want to have my own business, I want this to be my own thing, and I want to branch out, you will want a business page. But right now, I would just start it as if you are you know, a community member who works at the school, who also has this talent and skill and wanting to share it, and make the mission very clear that between you and the school, you know, the goal is to you know, do what? So create a mission statement, just a one-liner that is, you know, to to relax, you know, energize, whatever. Um, But come up with something that really is a mission that other people can read and say, oh, yeah, I want that. I need that. Um, You know, and make it a community-based thing. And occasionally there are holidays or days of the month or months of the year when donations are big. But like, Thanksgiving comes up, but you don't have to wait that long. There is something else between now and then. Like if you did a a can, you know, canned food drive for a pantry as a part, that's a big part of yoga, right, is kind right. of giving to and donation. So making it that this is a really, you know, economical, low-cost way for you to get exercise, but also to do something good for others. So it's kind of a win, and it's a win, and it's a win, and it's great PR for the school. And I would think the more you can do something like that where they may not see the value in this yet, but if you grow that and people begin to love the fact that, you know, this is offered and it's offered there, they will get behind it. I'm sure they will. Um, So little things that you can do is use your page, your personal page, but make sure, you know, like if it's all about that you want to get people to this, show images of yoga, you know, show you doing yoga poses or have someone come in if people are okay, they need to sign off on it, take pictures of you teaching the class, what does the setting look like, you know, for your cover or page, you know, and so when somebody lands at your personal page, they can see exactly what you're doing and list the fact that you teach a yoga class and when it is in your about section, you know, that's all about you. So tell people that and hook to like tag the school in your bio. Those would be good things. And then start just sharing articles that are supportive of that mission that you're going to write. Like maybe once a week, you know, one day a week, you're sharing an article that people can get behind. Maybe it's that you're sharing something 
specifically about a pose and how you put your hands, you know, and where you weight bear on your fingers, you know, and so it's the little details that help them kind of understand yoga and how you teach it, how you help them understand it, even if they're a beginner, you know, so really just little bits, but post once a day right now just to begin starting the conversation and see what people like and then go to all of your friends and say, hey, would you come and you know, would you post or would you like this or comment on this for me because we're really trying to drive some traffic to it. And um, you can tag a few friends if you want to. That may be dangerous unless they give you permission. Right. But ask them, you know, tag a friend, tag a local friend who you think would enjoy this or might be looking for yoga nearby. So those would be small ways to kind of get things going and then – you know, even though this class may be going on weekly, you know, or meet a couple of times a week, come up with a reason to, you know, there's a new event, like this is a special first class of a new session, or this is, uh, you know, bring a guest tonight. So drive some attention and excitement, even though it's maybe just a night that you would have to show up and teach anyway, drive some excitement about, oh, it's a great night for like a first um, a newcomer to attend because they'll feel then like, oh, it's intended for me. This is like welcome night, first night. I won't be the only beginner there. And those little things would be helpful. Does that help? Yes, very much. Okay. Yeah, Fabulous. good ideas. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Great. And then, you know, every once in a while, I would start communicating with wh- whoever is behind posting for the school and go in and say, hey, you know, at first I didn't have very many people you know, looking or doing anything. But now, you know, we've really got a community. Are you watching this? Just keep them aware because it may not be that they're not interested, but they may not realize the value of what is happening and, you know, how many other community people are there. So they may be starting to ask you, you know, can we post something? (laughs) Will you post this for us? You know, because you may be getting the traffic because you're talking about something everybody wants to hear about. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to move on to the next question unless you've got anything else you want to add. Uh, Those are great suggestions. I definitely will move forward with those. I love those. Okay. Fantastic. And that's a nice way for you not to have to like create your own content. You know, you can share something from Yoga Journal, you know, or from another blogger that you might like, and you're just curating right now to find out what do they like. Maybe eventually you will will blog and you'll do something. But for now, I would let that Facebook page kind of be research. And then ultimately, if you really want to, you know, have a business and create one, you will need a website. You'll need a web page because okay. you'll want them to come back home to that. But I would, I would just you know, start with this. Start with the Facebook page. Start the communication. And like all of the people in your community, you know, the businesses around it and people where you, you know, go to the dentist and the doctor and get your hair done and you know, your manis and petties or anything at all, start liking them and, and commenting on their page. And then every once in a while when you comment, if it's relevant, say, oh, by the way, there's this yoga class that I teach. It's da 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 You're welcome to join us. So you know, do a little mention here and there, and they'll, they'll be happy to have you do that if it's not a conflict of interest in their business. Okay. Okay. Next question. All right. So a little background again. So I'm working on my health and wellness coach certification. will be done September, October. Already am certified in the following. ACE, group fitness, registered yoga teacher, 500 hours, cycling, NSF, or NSF. NCSF, wow, tripping over my tongue, personal training. (laughs) I would like to start my own LLC, but not sure how to start out getting clients. What are the most powerful ways to start using social media to get going? First, my my first answer to that, I'm going to kind of, I can't help myself. I'm going to jump in. 
before I ask you to elaborate, you don't need an LLC to start getting clients, but you will need a website. So elaborate a little bit more on that. Um, I've just been in the business for a really long time, and it's always been my, you know, quote, second career. Yeah. And it's something I'm just passionate about, and it's like you only have so many years, you know, and I really want to do more. And mm-hmm. I feel like I have a really, really solid background now, and I have a lot to offer. And mm-hmm. um, so just trying to figure out maybe how to start maybe small and then mm-hmm. start growing it. And, you know, would that Facebook idea be the same kind of a thing? Or what other mm-hmm. social media, you know, maybe to draw in a few people here and there, um, you know, that kind of a thing. Yep. Okay, so given that you've got a... Uh, you know, I think we, we all like to say we have a 9-to-5 job, but maybe it's more like 5-to-9, and I mean 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. <laughs> for most right. of us. But I would start with with building the yoga thing because I, I think with your Facebook page, you'll get a lot of feedback. You're going to get a lot of interest. You're going to get potential questions like, you know, I have a bad back. Would this be good for me? Right? And Honestly, those people are probably not doing something else because if they're asking that question, they don't have another expert to ask. And you're going to learn, you know, what are people in my area who might be interested in this? What what would they need first? That will suggest to you maybe the line or the direction that you're going to go in with your niche. And we're going to talk about that coming up. But that will give you a lot of research to start. And then so what you're going to need is you're definitely going to need a website. And I I agree. You've got, you know, a huge background, you know, and a 500-hour registered yoga instructor plus the other things pulled together. I mean, you, you know the body really, really well. So, you know, I love the well-roundedness of everything that you're pulling together here. But again, you don't have to start an LLC yet. I mean, you can get clients and be operating for a while as a you know solo um, proprietor just without it. And then when you decide, okay, I'm ready to shift over, maybe you get this up and going, get a revenue stream so you're comfortable in saying, you know, I can make this work and ditch the other job, you know, then then get that LLC going. Um, so I would I would go that route and okay. and you should be fine. And, you know, just kind of decide what's my what's my mark as far as revenue coming in so that, you know, I can leave this other job and feel good about it or justify doing the LLC and, you know, rerouting where where the money's going and making it distinctly not a hobby but truly a job. Uh, but you need the the website to you know, tell people you, why you, where they're going, you know, so they'll come there from your social media page. And when you get a little traction with that social media page, then you're going to create a business page and it will be yours. It will be you. And, and this way there won't be a conflict of interest. Right now it's just that you're personally posting things about teaching yoga for the school district, but the business page will be just you and what your services are. But your out there in the community thing is probably going to drum up a lot of business. And if not those people in your class, they will know somebody that they'll refer because they will already have known, liked, and trusted you for a long time. So I think it's a great scenario. You're kind of building up just right in the right direction. And when you have that website, hand-in-hand with that almost simultaneously, you need to have a legit email source. Um, Do you have one now? Do you use a mail service? Uh, right now, I run through my school district for my uh, okay. yoga classes. For, yep. um, you know, of course, I have my own personal stuff, but right now mm-hmm. it's through you know who I work for. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Makes total sense. What I would think is when you when you build you know some simple website, won't take long, but then you almost immediately want to get something like Constant Contact, A Weber or MailChimp. 
Okay. Each one of those offers a brief free period of time and then a very low rate, you know, use it for $5 a month or use it for $10 a month, depending on you pay as you get more customers, more subscribers, then you'll begin to pay more, which is an okay deal, right? Because okay. you should be able to afford to pay more because once you have subscribers, you can make them offers. You know, I'm starting a new session or I have a personal training package or I'm starting, you know, this that you can charge for ideally. But you want them on your email list from okay. social because you, you own that real estate. And then they've really said, I do want to communicate more. I want to learn more about your services. So, that would be, you know, websites and a, an email place where you can then have a form so people on that website can sign up for, you know, some juicy freebie that they can't resist mm-hmm. so that you can then follow up with them and talk about, you know, your services and what their next step might be. And, you know, you're narrowing down and talking to them about the reason they got in and the goals and the transformation that they want. So great combination there. But social media then starts to be just the, this is where we connect with strangers and then we bring them over to, it's like bringing them over to your house and in, and inviting them in for coffee, right? So they yeah. then yeah. get there and they're really kind of in. So the best use of social media to get the most traction, the fastest. And you have such a great voice. I mean, I I would sit and talk to you all day. We've only been on the phone for, right, 10 (laughs) minutes. But you have a great voice. And, you know, I'm guessing you teach in front of a group. and And even though, you know, so many of us who do that are truly introverts, we are pretty good, if you can imagine, getting in front of that group and do video. The best use of social media for the fastest traction is video, video, video. Okay. Whether you do live on Facebook or you record it so that you can delete it and edit it, you know, if you don't love it, and then upload it, they both work. You can upload then also to YouTube, and uh, that gives you a little more traction as well. But even if you're targeting a, a geographical area, that's the key. That is the ticket. And they get to meet you. They get to hear your tone of voice. They get to see you. They, you know, understand you. And what you're going to do is any of us does this. We repel the people who don't love us, and we attract more of the people who do. And that's exactly what we want to do. So we're not wasting their time or ours, and, you know, you're going to love the people that you work with from that. But all you need to do all you need to do is commit to you know, some kind of a regular schedule, just like the social media posting where I was suggesting you know, once a week, maybe on Monday. You're, that's the day you're sharing a really good article that you read or a blog and saying a few words about it. So you're filtering it for your, your audience and saying, this is why I shared this. This is what I liked. And then maybe on Tuesday, that's the day you go live with video at a certain time. And and every week it's like the newspaper showing up on your doorstep when that happened, right? And and people expect that, oh, there's going to be, you know, a juicy piece of content. And you're not overwhelming them with tons of stuff every day, just like one good thing, maybe five or seven days a week, and you can kind of decide, okay, I'm just sharing a blog. That's very low maintenance as far as time goes. Um, But I'm going to go live. I've got to decide what I'm going to say. Turn on the camera. Maybe like me, it's like I have to have showered, right? (laughs) And I put my my, my teeth in and my face on, all of that stuff. Um, But video is, is a great way to connect, and you'll find that gets many more views much more frequently. So try to try to do video. Are you good in front of the camera, shy in front of the camera? Where are you yeah, at? Yeah, somewhat shy, but I've done it before. <laughs> okay, good, good. Yeah. So there you go. Okay, next question that you asked, and this is so great. So you said, I'm trying to narrow down my focus, my target audience, as 
as I mentioned in the presentation I did at Fitness Fest, it's hard because there are so many aspects of fitness that I love and I want to share, and I'm just going to stop right there because I'm guessing every listener right now can resonate with that, right? It's like, oh, don't back me into a corner. I like this and I like that, right? So get that. And here are a few of my ideas, and Carla shared, you know, Uh, three bullets, beginners to exercise, people who are hesitant to get started, easy, practical, fun, and doable ways that they can get moving and be healthy. The second one was yoga for beginners. And the third thing was health and wellness coaching in person and online. And I think you could easily combine those. I don't think you have a problem that you think you do. I think you might have another step that you need to take. But I don't think these things pose a problem. So what I do think is there will be an order for you to talk about those things with them because your market may not know that they're looking for yoga. They may not know that they're looking for health and wellness coaching because it's it's intangible and we usually find people reach for the tangible, they will probably reach for a, like a beginner's anything class, a beginner's cycling class, or a beginner's strength training class, or a beginner's yoga class. But still, what you're missing is a niche. And here's why. So I think you really got to narrow it down to, are you targeting males or females? Are you targeting a beginner who's in their 20s or who's 50 or who's 70? Because those are really different needs. So that, I think, is where you've got to, in your head, who is that person? I'm thinking just because of my age, I think Mm -hmm. it would connect more with people, I would say, 40 to 45 on up. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not so sure about... Seniors yet? I've I've been doing some training and research and things like that um, with that area, but n- not. I don't feel confident enough yet with seniors. Okay. So d- do something for me. Define senior. I would say seventies on up. <laughs> Okay, so when I turn 70, I'm not going to agree with you. Do you know that? (laughs) So I'm never going to call myself a senior, but I'm just pointing out how easy that is, right? To You really have to get clear on on not just age, even though I posed it to you that way, so not your fault, but on ability. Like where are they with their goals? Do they want to stay in their home and stay independent? Are they that point or are they, I want to do a 10K in PR, you know, or I want to do my first triathlon because you can find 70-year-olds who want both those things or, or 20 or 50-year-olds potentially, um, probably not who want to stay in their home and independent, but really start getting into, wait a minute, where are they? So thinking about all right, further in, you know, what's their weight right now? Is Does weight have anything to do with their motivation to want to start exercise? Why aren't they doing exercise now? What have they tried? What do they hate about exercise? And what do they hate about personal trainers? Those are questions you may not have the answers to right now, but it would be good for you to sit down and put pen to paper and if you think of somebody like in your head, like that, right, that's my ideal client. You know somebody who's kind of that. Ask them if you can just interview them. You know, could I have five or ten minutes? I, I'm really working on, you know, who I want to target and I want to, you know, build a business and I'd love to just get your perspective to make sure I'm going down the right street and, you know, let them know I'm I'm not trying to sell you. I just want to collect some information. And the more of those you can do, the more you'll really get the words and get the insight about, you know, not just what you thought was true, but really what's true for them, what they really want, what they really hate. And while you're doing that, that take great notes because that's great marketing copy. It's words right. that you'll write on your 
website and in your texts on your posts because they're just telling you exactly, you know, what it is. And if they feel like you're just doing research, you're not, you know, we all put the guard up when we think somebody's trying to sell me something, you know, they'll just be totally truthful. You know, and you might pose this to them and say, you know, I'm thinking of starting this side hustle, this side business, and, and I really need some feedback, you know, to know if I'm on track. If you pose it that way and they feel they're answering these questions to help you, then they'll be much more on board. Yeah, just gathering their input, that's, that's a great yep. idea. Yep. Yep. yep, but like there's that. no reason that at the end of that conversation, Carla, you ask two more questions. You can always say, if you're talking to somebody and realize, I could help this person so much, right, and I'd love to work with them, you can finish this interview with, would you like some help with that, and would you like some help from me? Oh, and you yeah. may just get a new client from doing that because – they have let their guard down. They told you all of this stuff, and you never know. Yeah, that's oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, that's a yes. really good idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so last last little piece. You said, I'm scared. I've worked for a school district, stable job, money, insurance, you know, my whole life. Um, but I have the itch to do something in the health wellness area for 25 years. Better scratch that, okay? <laughs> I have always taught fitness classes as a second career, but I want to try something maybe part-time to transition. Not sure if I should just jump in and do it full-time or do it little by little. And I know there's no easy answer to that. Yeah, any thoughts or words of wisdom? I will give you a couple. So. <laughs> Yeah. And and yet, ultimately, this is like you are going to have to make the decision. I would say today, you know, in 2019, I would, I would do what you're doing, but I would make sure that you've got some goals to hold yourself accountable. You know, and it's going to mean you're putting in longer days, you know, and you're, you're really going to get this side hustle going, and maybe you're doing weekends. And for a while it will be worth it because then you'll begin to see, okay, the revenue is coming up. You know, now I'm feeling like I can walk away. We can make this work. Um, When you have the pressure of you quit, you leave safety and security, and I know because I did this, it's panicky and um, it's life-changing and you realize how much we're wrapped up into what what we did, you know, and that was a, so much a part of who we are. And when money becomes like something that you don't have like you did and you think twice about everything, it really changes you. I mean, it, it messes with your self-esteem and self-confidence, and you don't want that when you're trying to build a business. But when you don't have any choice but to make it work, you make it work. So if you always have that something to fall back on, you know, that can be something that holds you back as well. So I'm just going to leave you with that thought. And that is just so mean, right? (laughs) But my advice today would be don't put that kind of pressure on yourself, but yet put some pressure. I mean, set goals. Don't just, I'm going to see how this goes kind of thing. Decide, I'm doing this program, I'm packaging it up this way, and I'm starting to offer it, and you know, here's the revenue expectation from this. So I would, I would look at you know, how to start you know, one-on-one training, but I would also start with what you know and who you know. You know, you know, if you're working in the school district, and I don't know what your role is there, but if you're a teacher, you work around teachers, and you know teachers and administrators, focus on that because you know their problems, you know their stressors, and you know what they need, you know, what kinds of postures they're in all day, what kind of stress they're under all day, what their schedule is like when they get there in the morning, and do they have lunch, or they have to do playground duty, and, you know, what time do they get to leave, and you know 
innately what that group of people needs, that may be a pool of clients right there that, you know, could you do a group with them because they all get each other, you understand them. So start and really optimize those skills that you have from doing what you've been doing for 25 years and that right there sets you apart from any anybody else, you know, any teacher or faculty person going to someone else because you get them. You've been in that environment. You totally understand their stressors. And so who would be better to work with them than you? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So in just our wrap-up, any last-minute questions that you've got? I, gosh, I don't, hmm. I don't think I have any questions, but it all, it makes sense. Um, and I think that this idea of just starting with kind of a personal Facebook page, and then it kind of, almost all of it kind of builds from there. And it seems like all three of these bullets I have on my paper actually all intertwine eventually. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they, it, it's almost like they could all come to fruition um, mm-hmm. based on what I'm doing right now. And if I integrate, you know, this fitness side of it um, with, with the kind of people that I've been working with for so long. So that just makes, it's like kind of like common sense. So it just, it solidifies that idea in my mind. So good. Yeah. So good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, Fantastic. thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much for being here. So we're going to check back in with you, sister. So we're not letting you off the hook. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, be sure to like, you know, my personal page for sure. And anybody else who's listening out there, come to the show notes. And if you're listening and you've got a question, make sure you leave it below the show link. And I'm going to call the show link fitnessmarketingmastery.com forward slash starting a business. And there's a dash between starting a and business. And I would so appreciate it if you'd leave us a rating in iTunes. Let me know if this format was helpful and if you like the live coaching on the spot and if you have follow-up questions about something that I said for Carla or if you add something different or more beneficial, comment below the show notes. Thanks so much. Check out the blog and other podcast episodes at fitnessmarketingmastery.com or listen to this podcast in iTunes. Go make a difference.